the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Diving Doris is 13, and she is the diving queen. She can do a flip because she knows she's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got go power. There she goes. <laughs> She's feeling her Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. That's a mighty good idea for you. Just make sure you eat a big bowl of Cheerios and milk every breakfast and you'll get Go Power, too. Because a Cheerios breakfast is loaded with proteins, vitamins, and minerals. The very things that help build healthy bodies, strong bones, good red blood, and muscles. Why, they'd be the sort of breakfast you'd go for even if they didn't taste so good. And they do taste delicious. Cheerios are a real oat cereal, already cooked with that delicious toasted oat flavor. So that's for you. Swell-tasting Cheerios and milk for Go Power. Eat them every morning and you'll hear... She's feeling her Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'll Silver. Hooray! Outlaw Jim Gatlin felt the law closing in on him. He assembled his gang of desperadoes, including co-leader Frank Harrison. Boys, we got to face facts. Texas is getting too hot for us, especially for me. Yeah, Jim, they have posters with your picture on them in every town we go to. Frank's right. With a reward of $10,000, someone's liable to turn you in. That's why I'm going up to Kansas and work with my old pal Gus Farron again. Oh, I remember Gus. Boys want to come with me? Why, sure yeah, not. Right. Gus has run the cafe in a place called Trailville, 40 miles south of Dodge City. He wrote and said he'd line up some jobs for him. Riding by night and resting by day, the outlaws reached the outskirts of Trailville, Kansas, where they separated and entered town at intervals, singly and in pairs. Jim Gatlin and Frank Harrison went to Gus Farron's cafe. Gus, a troubled look on his face led them into his private office and lifted a poster from the top of his desk. Oh, Jim, look at it. Look at what they plastered all over this town last week. Yeah, my picture. The same poster they used in Texas. Yeah, it tells about you being a murderer and a bank robber and about you escaping from jail. You don't have to tell me. I've read that lots of times. You know, Frank here is the one who led the boys when they broke me out of the jail in El Paso. Yeah. The law wants him and the boys, too. Yeah, but they don't have their pictures spread around. They can get by. But, Jim, you can't. The law's tough here. Yeah, where will I hide out? I don't know this territory. In Garrison. That's a town not far from here. It's off the main trail, and they've no post office, no telegraph office, no stagecoach station, no nothing. What about the law? Oh. <laughs> they've an old geezer they call a marshal, another one who acts as a deputy. But they're a laugh. They just wear the badges so they'll feel younger. <laughs> there aren't enough people in that town for them to protect. Well, I'm going into the cafe for a while. Frank, you come with me. All right. Hmm. I think I'll ride over to Gareth in tomorrow evening. Look the place over. On the following evening, the always rash Jim Gatlin slipped out of Farron's cafe office and rode to Gareth. Oh, who is? he entered a cafe. He kept his hat low over his eyes and stood at the deserted end of the not-too-crowded bar. A small elderly man eyed Gatlin for a few minutes, then quietly left the cafe. The 
The man was Deputy Sheriff Alec Bascom, who ran rubbery legged to the office of Marshal Tom Searles. Tom! Tom, get your gun! He's in the cafe. Who? That I'm beyond a poster we got last week. He's here in garrison in the cafe. Uh, Jim Gatlin? Yeah! Jim Gatlin's thirst was greater than his caution. He saw the two elderly men at the bar, but paid them scant attention. Not until they moved next to him did he recall Gus Barron's description of the lawman in garrison. Before Gatlin could move, one of them pressed a gun against him. You're covered, Gatlin. From this side, too. All right, men. I respect two guns more than I do one. Now, put your hand down. There, Alec, snap the cuffs on him. Now, put your wrists together. There. <laughs> no two-bit tin badges like you clowns are going to send me back to Texas. You think not, Gatlin? You'll see different once they have you in the lockup. Alec, he'll ride over to the telegraph office in Trailville and get in touch with Texas authorities. And I'll tell him to bring that $10,000 reward. Oh, oh there, oh. oh steady, it was uh, after midnight uh, when Deputy Marshal Alec Bascom reached Trailville. The telegraph office was closed, but by inquiry, he found the operator in Gus Farron's cafe. Well, uh, say there... They tell me you're the one who sends messages over the wire. Then you heard right. But it's after office hours. I'm Deputy Marshal Bascom of Garrison. And I want to send an important message right away. What have you got to say that's so important, Marshal? We've just caught Jim Gatlin. <laughs> the biggest outlaw in the entire West. You, Captain Gatlin? Yep. Have him in the hoose guy over in Garrison now. So you got to open up that office and wire the authorities in Texas about it. <laughs> Come on. Follow me. Gus Farron and Frank Harrison, both in the cafe, had heard Alec Bascom's blatant announcement. They hurried into Farron's office. Then Harrison said, That fool, that crazy fool Gatlin. Gus, we warned him not to move around where he could be recognized, and now he gets himself in that jail. Ah, they probably picked him up in some cafe. That's where he always heads. We've got to get him out of that jail. He'll have a heavy guard for Jim. You can bet on that. Uh, Gus, can you get me a deputy sheriff's badge somewhere? What? Why not? Sure, sure, there are ways of getting everything. Why? Give those hombres over in Garrison a day to get used to having Jim Gatlin in their jailhouse. Then send them a telegram. We can't. There's no office over there. But wires are delivered from here, aren't they? Yeah. Well, listen. One make-believe telegram and a sheriff's badge will get Jim Gatlin out of that jail. I'll put on the badge late tomorrow night. The message of Jim Gatlin's capture reached Texas. It also reached every other telegraph office in surrounding states and territories. Soon the word was being passed in streets and stores everywhere. In nearby Dodge City, among those who heard the news the next afternoon was an Indian. When Tonto learned of the outlaw's capture, he sped back to where the Lone Ranger waited in camp. There he told the masked man about Jim Gatlin. The Lone Ranger's reaction was immediate. Hello, we'll ride to Garrison at once. Here, Silver. Ah, uh, it's not far, Kimasabi. We'll make it by 10 or 11 o'clock tonight. And me wonder why Jim Gatlin go to Garrison. We may learn when we get there. He's just going to be cut. Easy for that. Come on, Silver. In Trailville, Gus Farron secured a telegraph blank and prepared a fake message. One of the outlaw gang rode to Garrison that evening and delivered the message to Marshal Searles, who was seated at his desk. As soon as the crook left the office, the marshal opened the door to the next room, where Deputy Alec Bascom sat before a cell guarding Gatlin. Uh, Alec, come here a minute. And leave this crook unguarded? He's not going to have time to break out. This will only take a minute. All right. Don't bother coming back, you old goat. Uh, that's enough out of you, Gatlin. What is it, Tom? Yeah. Look at this. Oh, a telegram, huh? Is it natural to the one I sent last night? Uh, not exactly. It's from uh, Sheriff Williams of M. Dorada County, Texas. Says, uh, says, have word you captured outlaw Jim Gatlin. Deputy Rance Phillips has been trailing Gatlin for months and is now in Indian Territory. Have advised Phillips to proceed to your office at once and claim prisoner who is wanted for murder in this county. It is time, Sheriff Williams. What are you going to do, Tom? Yeah, we'll just wait till the deputy shows up. Then we'll go to the judge in Trailville and find out what's legal in a case like this. Now, you'd better go back to guarding our $10,000 prisoner. All right.
We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Because champions are made not for... Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Don't ever doubt it. Champions are made, not born. You can get there. For example, take the story of Wheaties champion Stan Musial of the St. Louis Cardinals. Young Stan was willed no claim to fame, no magic way to learn the game. He had to sweat and give his all, learning to field and hit that ball. Sure, Wheaties was his breakfast call. Today they call him Stan the Man, still and always a Wheaties fan. Stan Musial has been powering up with Wheaties right along, 19 years. Good for Stan, good for you. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Now watch Stan belt that ball. Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Because champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. Now to continue. Later in the evening, Tottle called on Marshal Searles, told of the Lone Ranger, and escorted the old lawman to the masked man's camp. After an exchange of questions and answers about Jim Gatlin's capture, the Marshal showed the Lone Ranger the telegram he had received and said, Then I got this message from Sheriff Williams of Enderada County, Texas. Marshal Chuck McCullough, Sheriff of Enderado. He has been for years. Ah, we see him last month. When we in Texas? Must be a new man, then. Who delivered this message to you? Never from the telegraph office in Trailville. This isn't a regulation message form. Huh? How do you know it isn't? The telegraph company uses two forms. One which the public uses. The other for receiving messages is used only by company personnel. This is a public form. I'd suggest you check on this wire. I'll do that. Oh, uh... Wish you'd ride back to town with me and advise me how to handle this, Omri Gatlin. I don't know. I'll both go with you, Marshal. As the Lone Ranger, Toto, and Marshal Searles set out on the short journey to Garrison, a man entered the Marshal's office. He wore a shining silver badge on the lapel of his coat and a wide grin on his face. Frank Harrison, in his role of sheriff, had purposely timed his entrance for this late hour. He saluted the surprised Alec Bascom, who stood near a door at the side of the room. Howdy. Am I talking to the famous Marshal Searles? No. Nope. Marshal's not here. I'm Alec Bascom, his deputy. Glad to know you, Alec. I'm a deputy myself. I'm from El Dorado County, Texas. Hey, you must be that fellow Rance Phillips. Yeah. Where's Gaffin? Locked up in the cell, right behind this door. But you can't claim him, Phillips. You gotta make arrangements with the court. <laughs> I haven't come here to try and take him away illegally. You'll get your reward all right. Well, what? If that's what you were thinking about. Well, I just wanted to tell you. <laughs> no offense, man. Yeah, I know that. I suppose you have a big guard looking after Gatlin, huh? You don't need a big guard. Two of us are enough to guard that hombre. Oh, where's the other man? In the cell room, keeping an eye on him. Do you mind if I take a look at Gatlin? Just to make sure there's no mistake. Uh, there's no mistake, Phillips. He's Gatlin. No doubt about it. He admitted it. Uh, still want to see him? If you don't mind. <laughs> oh, you'll sure be surprised to see him, <laughs> I bet. Follow me, Phillips. Louis. I want you to meet Deputy Sheriff Phillips from Enderado County, Texas. Howdy. Ellie, is this a gent you were telling me about? Yep, Louis. He's the one in the telegram. All right, you two, get your hands up. Uh, a gun. Good work. Nice, Frank. I knew you'd get me out. You're not a sheriff. You're a... Oh! You shot Ellie. He shouldn't have reached for a gun. Don't shoot for anything. Uh, no, sir. Keep your hands high and go close to the cell door. That's it. Jim, can you reach his holster? Yeah. Yeah, I have his gun, Frank. Good. Now, Louis, take your keys and open the cell door. Yes. Yeah. I'm opening it. Thanks again, Frank. Is the gang with you? No, they're still in trail with You, Louis, get into that cell. I'm going. I'll keep you covered while Jim ties and gags you. Never mind the cover, and I'll take care of them. You bandage that other Aubrey. At that moment, Marshal Searles entered his office, followed by the Lone Ranger and Toto. The office is empty. Alec must be inside with Louie. I'll go and see. Alec, I came back to get this. Hey, yeah, Frank. Good thing you heard it come in. I didn't. He's out like a light. He'll be cold for hours. This is the marshal. Let's pick him up and put him into the cell with the other two. Yeah. Uh, he's heavy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, 
right now. Place him on the floor. Open the cell again. This will take care of the entire law department of Garrison. But it doesn't take what? care of the law department's friends. Stay behind you. Mask, man. Cut him out, wait till let me shoot. Oh, oh, you're too slow, Gatlin. An Indian, too. He's the one who shot me. Yes, and he'll take your guns and lock you in the cell where you belong. Otto, I'll keep them covered while you lock them up. Uh, and try to revive Marshal Searles. Ah, uh, me do it, Kim. Alec and Louie were released, and a doctor was called to attend the wounded deputy and the two crooks. In the morning, every able-bodied man in garrison was recruited into a special posse, and all promised to keep the outlaws under constant guard until proper authorities appeared to take Jim Gatlin to Texas. Then Louis repeated Frank Harrison's conversation, adding, He told Gatlin that the rest of the gang is in Trailville. If that's the case, we'd better advise the sheriff there at once. Yeah, you're right, mister. We'll go to Trailville anyway, even though we're sure now that telegram was a fake. We'll still check it out, Marshal. Let's find out, if possible, who wrote the message and sent it to you. All right, Tonto, let's go. Uh-huh. In Trailville, the Western Union operator read the telegram which Marshal Searles handed him, then snorted, Shucks, Marshal, I never wrote this. What's more, no such message ever came over these wires. I know that handwriting, though. You do? Yes. I just happened to be reading a telegram I sent yesterday, written in the exact same script. Well, well, hey, it's right here. Just a minute. There you are. You see? Say, that, that is the same writing, isn't it? It sure is. And the fellow who wrote it is Gus Fan. He owns a cafe up the street here. And, mister, he said the man who wrote this fake telegram was a fellow named Gus Farron. Gus Farron? We know that man, Kimasabi. Of course we do, Toto. Marshal, that ties up. Gus Farron was a desperado in Texas. He and Jim Gatlin rode together at one time. They must have joined again recently. If that's the case... Now, listen. Go to the sheriff here. A short time later, while the masked man waited outside in the shadows, Marshal Searles told Sheriff Luke Gray of Trailville what the Lone Ranger had in mind. And the masked man says he... He thinks he might be able to trick Farron into leading him to where Gatlin's gang is hiding. Marshal, in view of what you told me, I'll go along with the idea. It may save us time and bloodshed. Tell the masked man to get into Farron's office. No one will interfere. And tell him I'll have a big posse ready to follow in case he and Farron ride off together. All right, Sheriff. That afternoon, assured that Gus Farron was in his office... The Lone Ranger pounded loudly on the door at the rear of the cafe. Farron himself opened it. What the... Who are you? Wait, don't reach for your gun. Get back inside and listen to me. Hey, what is this? Who are you? A man whose face mustn't be seen here. I came to tell you that Jim and Frank are bottled up in garrison. Bottled up? What do you mean? That telegram you faked messed things up a bit. What? How do you know about that? I came from garrison this morning. I was with Jim and Frank. They're still back in that town. And, Gus, I'm here to get the gang together to get Jim and Frank out. I should never have told that hombre to come up here. All right, I don't know how you're mixed up in this outfit, but... And I don't know what Jim does anymore. Then take me to the gang, and I'll explain the plan. I'll take you, but it'll mean riding cross-country ways. It's just as well with me wearing this mask. Yeah, come on. I'll get my horse, and we'll ride to the hideout. Men, just as the Lone Ranger's blow knocked out Gus Farron. All right, take it. Sheriff, the gang's in that cabin down in the hollow. Have your men right around the top and surround those crooks. They'll never get out. Sheriff, Sheriff, the outlaws heard us. Look, they're coming out of the cabin. Man, you heard what the masked man said. Surround them. Don't let them get past us. There's no other way out. Right around them, keep firing down at them. Me, find this hombre, Farron. See that he doesn't escape, Toto. I'll help the posse. Sheriff, they're giving up. See? One of them's waving. 
Give me a white cloth. You're right. And hold your fire. All right, you down there. Hands up from up here one at a time. Deputy, search him in time. All right. Well, it, it worked out, Sheriff. You have Gatlin's gang. You turn them over to the Texas lawmen when they come here to get Gatlin and Harrison. Yes, and I'll drive fair and out of Trailville at the same time. You'll get the reward for Gatlin, Marshal. Well, I'll see that Alec collects that, but the masked man's the one who did everything, seems. Even down... Marshal, he and the Indian are riding away. Adios, sir. The masked man's yelling something to us. Adios. Adios. Oh, what do you know? Adios. Adios, stranger. Yeah, adios. But he's no stranger. He's our best friend, Sheriff. He's the Lone Ranger. Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.